Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about MVP. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, which framework would you use to quickly put together a minimum viable product or a proof of concept? Would you pick Django, Laravel, Rails, Express or something else? Speed of development is obviously an important factor. Mm. That's a good question. Um, it very it depends a little bit on the nature of the project because if if my goal is to simply create, you know, the quickest thing that you can possibly imagine, and I, at the same time I'm not really so concerned about continuing work further down the line and scaling it to you know something more advanced or something that is more standard process type of things. And I'm really interested only in like a static website type of thing or something that is fairly low complexity, then I would probably use something like Gatsby. Uh, that would suit my needs very well. It's going to take care of most of it. Or you could, you know, do something like Create React app. There are equivalents of these sorts of tools for other platforms as well. Uh, if it's mostly, I mean, a, if it's a completely static website or something that doesn't really require an SBA type of thing, then I'm pretty sure I'm, I would just spin up like an express server with an index file. Like, I mean, I'd, maybe I could even do the whole thing with, you know, a Python HTTP server and a static file in the directory. I mean, that really depends on like how low level are we going to go if, uh, or rather how simple are we going to make it. Uh, because you can make a static website like that if you, all you need is like a demo page with some HTML and CSS and some static content. So if that's the case, I would really just maybe even, as I said, do a Python server or something like that because it's basically on your computer already. Um, but um, as I was saying, it's more likely that I would use something like Gatsby, for example, because I believe that... Uh, uh, you've probably heard me say before that these low-code, no-code solutions, they have a place. This is a scenario where they have a place where you're not so concerned with setting yourself up for large-scale development. Or it's not the goal is not to create something that's going to scale up to, you know, really large size. The goal is to delivery speed. Quick, 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 quick wins. And that is where these sorts of codes, low code solutions, and these sorts of tools are very useful. Create React App is also an example that I could, that I would use uh, for mostly static stuff. Uh, on the other hand, let's say for the sake of argument that I'm going to make something that is a little bit more scalable um, and we still need high, high development velocity. Well, then I probably would go with Next.js or something like that, uh, because I mean, now assuming again that we're going to do things in React land, uh, there are other solutions that you could use as well for Angular and Vue and so forth. And uh, once again, if it's like a static website, it's still like, you know, if it's all server side or if if it's like if you don't have an SBA need, I still think that I would use uh, even if I mean, back in the day I would have used PHP. Basically, that's what I would have done if I wanted to make like a, if there was no need to make an SBA. But since I already know React fairly well and Next.js basically gives me server-side rendering for free from in literally it's like I don't really see a reason to build things in PHP anymore uh, for, pro uh, for this sort of stuff, right? I mean, so I might as well use Next. And uh, if uh, that is the case, I would try my hardest to basically just create a uh, client-side only application. That's something that I do. That's my favorite technique for reducing the amount of work that I have to do. I do that on my personal projects as well. And most of the stuff that I do professionally, I do the same thing. Uh, I always start with a UI first. Uh, I need Usually you need a server so that you can scale. But I never add a database or any back backend stuff until I need the backend stuff, if that makes sense. Because the browser actually has things like local storage and like APIs where you can get persistence in the browser. So unless it's really important, like for example, that if you have a user who just wants a demo site or something like that, and they just want to click around on it in their own computer and kind of see the proof of concept, then I will I usually use like a store the state in local storage. 
that's basically all I do and then they can click around to their hearts to decide without having to implement anything on the back end and then I just create the UI and then if they actually want this to be like a full-fledged application then I connect back to the back end and then you know you do the whole server and like you might add a database and so forth but that's probably what I would do for scalability if I wanted to make something there is one scenario where I would probably not use next and that would be if I have a fairly heavy need for APIs or things like that where there's a bunch of server-side log uh, backend logic because I just don't like how honestly I don't like how Next.js does APIs I think it's like the, f the, the URL structure with this, the folders and so forth I think it's the dumbest thing ever uh, I hate it to with my with a passion because it's the exact same system that Akka HTTP uses in Scala and that is an abomination that should be killed with fire if you ask me but that's you know that's me not being too opinionated about that uh, any solution that uses a DSL style syntax to build up a URL is a stupid idea in my world uh, because when you're creating a URL. I think that the most efficient way to do it is through string templates, through string templates, because that means that you get an overview. That makes it very easy for you to get an overview what URL you are on. It gets it becomes super clear and super um, uh, crisp when you're doing searches for different paths and so forth. And uh, from a <laughs> security perspective it is so much easier to get control of all the endpoints that you have and all the ways that you can hit something in the back end if you just use a string template there is no reason to use a DSL practically ever in my opinion and so in that scenario if I have a lot of back backend APIs I would just use Express for the MVP uh, because it's super quick to work in Express uh, you don't really you have full freedom to do like, pretty much out of the box you have what you need in order to build basically any backend API unless you're doing like a GraphQL thing or something like that uh, so you don't have really have to think about it if you're doing like a pure GraphQL type of thing I would probably use nest.js because I really like nest for like, nest is it's a little bit more you know you need to sort of get into the the way nest does things but Honestly, I really like the way that they did the GraphQL plugins. Like I've worked with it uh, for a while, and honestly, it's a treat. I, it, it's uh, it takes care of so much of the work that you have to do. So, in that scenario, if I'm, I would probably not actually use Express for that specific use case. But that's that's in that scenario. Uh, so as you probably noticed, most of the th stuff that I'm talking about is related to JavaScript land and that is simply because I believe that uh, for practically every single web project I don't see a reason to pick anything apart unless you have like a stronger side to yourself if you're more of like a if you have a programming language that you feel more comfortable with then you know go for it but for the standard MVP like f Greenfield project whatever you're doing from scratch nothing is going to be faster than working in uh, say TypeScript or jo just plain old JavaScript with a node backend. Uh, in MVP land I, there is nothing that I can think of that would be like more efficient. Uh, you can use serverless, it's also based on JavaScript if you wanted to etc etc. I mean the possibilities are endless and JavaScript is like the best in my opinion language for MVP and proof of MVP and uh, proof of concept stuff um, uh, unless you have like technical requirements on you. So what I want you to take away from this is that I basically would say that for proof of concept, practically everything JavaScript land is going to be faster than practically anything else that you can think of. Uh, if you don't have to think about scalability or anything, uh, you might, you're literally just going to write this thing really, really quickly, see if it works, and then might, you might not even know what's going to happen next. Then I would just go with uh, using one of the tools that I talked about. I believe that if you're doing like a company type of thing like a basic you know you're gonna make some basic uh, website with some pages like a corporate website type of thing Gatsby is really really fast uh, it's perfect for that use case if you're gonna make blogs or whatever you're making it's the, honestly I think you could get probably you could probably run a business like a low-end freelancing gig type of thing on just Gatsby alone for a lot of the corporate websites you you find 
are like a perfect use case for that uh, solution. If you're doing like a GraphQL back thing, backend type of thing, I found that NestJS GraphQL setup is really efficient. I really like it, especially with the type generating and so forth that you get basically for free. So it's really strong case for that. If you're baking APIs or anything like that, I just go back to good old Express because I think it's the fastest thing out there for just REST APIs or whatever you're doing, right? And then if I'm doing a service, like I want something that's going to scale, that where I don't really know what I'm building, like it's just going to be a web page generic type of thing, Next.js is a very good strong choice uh, where you can pick, you can just keep everything server-side and if you know, don't even make an SBA if you don't want to, or you can, and you can then transition into an SBA if you actually need it. Uh, but it really depends on the level that I need to go for. And I try as much as possible to avoid using databases and like a lot of more backend heavy logic uh, until I'm certain that I need it. Because a lot of the cases, in a lot of the cases for MVPs and proof of concept, it's actually fine to just use local storage until you realize that oh no, there's actually you know, there are expectations where the service actually needed. And that saves you a lot of time as well. Have a great day.